To Clive Barrow, it was just an ordinary day, nothing unusual or strange about it, everything quite naval, nothing outstandingly, just another day. But to Roger, it was something special, a day amongst days, a red lettuce day, because Roger was getting married. And as he dressed that morning, he thought about the gay bachelor soups he'd had up. What? He had with all his pals, even I can't read it. And Clive said nothing. To Roger, everything was different. Wasn't this the day his mother had told him about? In his best suit and all that, grimming and shaking hands, people tying boots and rice butter on his car. But John, now, has the success of this book uh, inspired you to write anything else? Uh, oh, yes. Well, it wasn't because of the book, you know. I did it anyway. I would have done it anyway. You would? It's a sort of personal thing. You know, I like it more than anybody else likes it. You know, I can't, <laughs> I can't help that, but I do. That makes me and the others laugh more than anybody, I think. So it's just, I would have done it anyway. Now, why is it a personal thing? Why would you have done it anyway? Because I've done it long before I even picked up a guitar, you know. I've written one thing or the other and laughed at it myself and then showed it to my friends and they've laughed and, <laughs> you know, that's it. E even in school, I believe, there's some reports of this. Mm. I don't know whether they're true or not. You used to change the um, words in poems and Keats and yes. so Yes. Used to rewrite. Well, you know, I'd, I'd get the Keats thing and just sort of copy it out and just change it as I went along. Because half of his appeared funny already to me. You know. mm. Why did you do this? Why did this appeal to you? I don't know. Just made me laugh, yeah. Ha-ha, I used to go, ha-ha. Uh, are you going to write any more? Yes, I'm doing it all the time, you know. Have you got any plans for a new book? Yeah, well, uh, the publisher's got a lot of plans, you know, but I seem to be holding them up. I meant to do one for Christmas, but I can't do it, you know, if they just say do it for Christmas. No. I'm just sort of doing it when I feel like it. We were very much influenced by Lewis Carroll in this, and Jabberwocky. Well, that's the only one I... When, when the book came out and sort of everybody left about saying it's like this and that, Lewis Carroll was the only one that I could remember re that I remembered definitely reading and liking. I think uh, Jabberwocky started me writing in definitely uh, sort of back to front of things. And uh, I think Ronald Searle started me drawing. How do you like to be remembered as a guitarist, I mean, Beatle, or as a writer, as a satirist? I don't, satirist. Mind. I don't mind whether I'm remembered or not, on this. Yeah. Where, where do you draw your inspiration from? Do you, for instance, draw inspiration for satire from things that happen around you when you're a Beatle, some of the absurd things, for instance, the Lord Mayor's reception and so on? Um, well, I wouldn't use the whole thing like the Lord Mayor's reception, but I could use one or two things that people like that would say, or just somebody, that, the way they looked. If, I, you know, somebody looked a bit funny to me, well, I could imagine them only not there somewhere else and write about them in a completely different situation. And how important is your drawing to you, your, your, your artwork? You, you wanted to be at one stage an artist, didn't you? Yes, but as, as usual, I wanted to be the wrong one. I wanted to be a painter, which I had... I was lousy at. The only thing I could do was this kind of work. But I insisted on taking painting. With. Some of these drawings look, look um, as if you're preoccupied with, with um, abnormalities. Well, I'm not really. It's just that they're, it's, uh, they're, not, quite, they're not very abnormal. Physical abnormalities. Yeah, well, my earlier drawings when I was about 18 or 19 were really abnormal, you see. So I think they're quite normal. They might look abnormal now, but they're not. They're quite clean and fresh, I thought. Healthy well, people. it's a very clean and fresh spirit of skepticism in all this. Are you, are you naturally skeptical of things and of people and situations? Uh, probably, yeah. Do you think people have a tendency to, to underestimate you, to think that you're barely articulate and that you don't have a mind uh, because I'll, you're a Beatle? They might Seriously. Have, yeah, I think they did for quite a time, but now they expect more. Uh, I mean, so some press conferences, they'll just come in and sit down and wait for us to be witty about nothing. You know? But then they won't even talk sometimes. They think we're going to give a show. Yeah. So it's it's not all roses. Is this, is this why you play around a lot in your press conferences? No, well, we, no, we play around a lot. If if there's just nothing happening, you know, we just mutter to ourselves. And, but if we, it's usually the best playing around is when there's some good people there asking questions. You know. But if there isn't, what can you do? You know, sitting there waiting for you to entertain them, and you can't. You know, because there's. We can only work if we've got sort of straight man, as we call them. And somebody's going to ask us something for us to say anything sort of a, a bit funny. Can't just go in and sort of, well, I'm in the room. <laughs>